Hi, David. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My audio is off. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Good. How are you, David? All right. So was um, was Al Sweet ill or is that, I mean, I, it was obviously an elderly guy, but. You know, he was 89. And um, I can think he, the best way to describe it is he just kind of wound down, you know, he just, yeah. um, there wasn't any particular event. He just, his body just kind of gave out and he slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Battle with time. Yeah, but thankfully, you know, again, he um, he had no pain. He basically died in his sleep, surrounded by his family. So mm. it's a blessing. Okay. Hey, David, you got a haircut. It looks good. Boy, Jeff, was I long overdue. I know. I know the feeling. But I didn't wait as long as you did. <laughs> I, I lost a pound. You know, <laughs> welcome <pan>. back. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> man, good. Feels I know. Good. We all look like we went back to uh, the seventies for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I couldn't make the meetings yesterday, but um, hopefully it went well. Um, the um, that thing from the city about the uh, Hollywood General Plan that was pretty disturbing. Uh, who knows what that? Yeah, who knows what what that's about? Yeah. Right, do we have? Let's see. We have uh, Groper, or do we? <laughs> we have Rick Howard. We don't have Timothy, and we don't have Temple. Just joined. Who? Temple Williams. Hey, Temple, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Welcome, hey. welcome, Temple. Hey, David. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Hey, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Thanks so much. So the, uh, uh, do we did did um, did uh, Ron Groper join? He has not joined yet. He did say that he would be here. All right. Let's just wait a second. So Jeff, you weren't on any of the meetings yesterday. No, I told Diana yesterday was a bad day, but um, you know she had a week notice, but. Uh, you know, we just decided not uh, not to mess things up. Just let it go through, and I, I couldn't make them. Um, the plum I thought would be real interesting. The plum meeting. It's a beautiful um, project, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. Ambitious. Did um, what's her name? Uh, the lady. Uh, yeah, she was there. Yeah. yeah, I invited her to join the committee as a uh, as a public uh, person. So. Yeah, she was there. Know. She didn't say anything. She didn't. Yeah. Well, well, I see. don't see Ron, but I'm here. Oh, he just joined. What? He just joined. Yeah, I'm here. He's here. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order at uh, 102. Um, Jeff uh, asked me to uh, to chair it this year, and I'm delighted. Thank you. Um, I look forward to it. We have uh, a lot of things to do. Congratulations, um, David. What? I said congratulations on chairing this very important meeting. Thank you. Uh, okay, Timothy, there you are. Great, we have the uh, of the full a full house. Um, yeah, hi all. Who's that? Claire. Okay. All right. There is an M. Claire who I don't know, and someone that. It looks like fucking Fobble, who I also don't know. Um, so uh, that must be part of the public. Uh, I'll ask that if the public uh, does identify uh, its, his, or herself, they use more ordinary names that aren't offensive to people. We have had uh, hacking in the past, one uh, where someone started playing a, a porn movie and uh, also using vulgarity. We prefer that that not occur at these meetings or public meetings. A lot of people get offended with vulgarity or profanity. Um, 
Um, okay, so uh, we ask that you abide by civility. It's a good thing in government uh, and in all meetings, business meetings of all type. Uh, so uh, is there any pub, does any public have any comment for items not on the agenda or wish to be announced? Hearing none, I'll simply uh, start with an introduction. Temple, great to have you uh, on the committee and on the board. Timothy, good to see you again. It's been too long. Uh, and the rest is, uh, I think everyone knows one another, except we don't know the um, humorous public who identifies himself as that fucking fobble. Uh, but the picture seems to match the uh, intellect of the uh, lower class human being. Now, um, approval of the minutes. The problem with the minutes is that the, they occurred at a time in a meeting in October where with a, a different configuration of this committee. And so we couldn't approve it because uh, people here were not there. I can simply say that I'll summarize them and I'll find out, Jeff, how we uh, approve them with some uh, committee. Uh, that was a meeting where Sarah Dussault, uh, who was the LASHA chair, spoke about the efforts that the LA City is doing and their funding to um, uh, address the homeless crisis in the city. And she spoke about um, you know, the obvious things that uh, they want to reduce the numbers. So who doesn't? And they're trying to find uh, transitional housing and then permanent housing for those who are unhoused and find themselves on the street. It was just an update. Uh, and then, of course, our, our excellent uh, security staff gave a report. Um, so those can't be approved since no one was at that meeting. So I'm going to uh, defer that agenda item to another point in time. Uh, and we will uh, address them at that time. Um, on the, the security report, um, and then we're gonna get into um, uh, this evaluation of some needs in the, in the community that we can now address in this new year as we're moving forward with hopefully a post COVID time. It's uh, in the near future, but it's still a COVID and a restricted time. But um, I'd like to, to know uh, from uh, Ayana and Bill um, what it's like out there on the street and how you've been dealing with both security issues and any challenges that uh, your, your staff and yourself uh, deal with. If you can just give a summary of what you do, because there's a few new people on the committee. Absolutely. So uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ayana. And uh, just to kind of go over some of the stuff that we actually do uh, today, being Friday, we do a weekly clean collaboration with Clean Street. Uh, today's Clean Street was successful. We go out to the district with our unhoused neighbors. We go around, help assist with the cleanup. Uh, we targeted six different locations today, all of which were very successful in cleaning up. Of course, everything we've been very, uh, Fortunate to have a lot of collaboration with our neighbors. We provide them with trash bags and water. So we've been getting a lot of uh, positive feedback from our unhoused neighbors. It's a great collaboration effort that we're doing on a weekly basis on Fridays. And that's just one of the things that we're doing. <clears throat> Another thing that we're also doing is continue to monitor the food coalition on the weekends. That continues to be a positive thing with our community. All the trash pickup at the end of that event is all accounted for and the area is remaining clean and clear. We're also doing unhoused census. Uh, we're doing that on a weekly basis at the end of the month. Uh, we're getting a more accurate census of our community, both uh, RV campers, unhoused, uh, sheltered, as well as tenants that we actually have. And uh, for the month of February, we'll go ahead and do that towards the end of the month. But overall, our collaboration with our team, with our community has been great. We've been getting a lot of positive feedback from our stakeholders for the calls for service that we're responding to. We have a call for service <coughs> time of five to 10 minutes, which is pretty great for our district. And those are just some of the things that we're actually doing. Ayana, um, when you, I know there were uh, some stakeholder complaints about um, homeless feeding things, but you have not, there's been, with your staff is there, so there's no, 
interaction, no complaints or the, the, the public uh, property owners or business owners are not interact. They're just going, they're not creating any conflict, right? With your presence? Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody is very, remaining peaceful when we actually go to the Pluto Coalition events. There's no interaction between our stakeholders and the general public, as well as the unhoused neighbors that we actually have. And uh, we haven't had any complaints at all from our stakeholders, which is really positive. And we're getting a lot of positive collaboration with our unhoused neighbors and the people from Pluto on the Coalition. Uh, Where are the police? Together. Have they been around? No, they haven't been around. Uh, we're the middle... We are the middle department between regular public and the law enforcement agencies that we actually have. We're the first ones that are actually on call. Okay. And then um, uh, on the, the cleaning team, uh, uh, what's happened is, has the city been also doing their, their cleaning? Uh, yes, the city of uh, LA, the sanitation department does their own cleaning. Um, there is no communication between them and us. We don't know when they go out, but we've seen them when we go out with our clean collaboration. Right, okay. Yeah. Nayana, could, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question on the, on the Clean Streets program. What, maybe this has been covered in previous meetings, so if so, I apologize, but what is the procedure? What are you actually tangibly doing out there? Are you, you know, I, I understand you're providing trash bags and, and, you know, having people clean up, but is there, you know, is there, are you spraying the, the sidewalks down? Is there, you know, what, what's the actual process? Just so we get a yeah, so the, yeah, absolutely. So the actual process actually begins a few days in advance, uh, usually Wednesday, Thursday, throughout the week, we go around the district and our officers, while they're out patrolling, they identify areas of critical need that actually need to be cleaned up or power washed, depending on the severity of the situation. Once we identify those locations, we take before photographs of those locations and we share them. So we share them with our clean streets. So we are all in conjunction and working together. Once we've identified those locations on Friday morning at 9 a.m., <clears throat> we go to the specified location. Once we do that, we work together, clean up the areas around the tents, whatever our unhoused neighbors don't want, we, that's what we throw away. We don't throw away anything that they want. I just wanna make that clear. We only throw away items that they do not want and that is on the street that causes a safety hazard to the general public. Right. And if they did, uh, if you guys also, didn't do it, it would probably stay there until the city maybe came around whenever they would. Yes. And in addition to that, we also give them advance notice on Wednesday, on Wednesday, when we go out to actually identify these locations and we're taking the photographs, our officers are actually advising our community of the cleanup that's actually coming about on Fridays. And then mm -hmm. also with that, there's a lot of general collaboration with our unhoused neighbors. They're getting to, we know that a lot of them on a person basis now. So we're kind of working together and a lot of them already anticipate that we're coming around on Fridays. And that's where the trash bags come into play. Uh, when we come around, they already have their trash ready to go so that we can pick it up a clean street and we give them extra trash bags so that the following week, they have a location to kind of store their stuff to keep the area clean. And is it possible, to, are you to that sort of collaborative point with our unhoused neighbors where you can say, hey guys, we're coming in on, on Friday, we're going to power wash the sidewalk, you know, can you move your tents 10 feet one way for a few minutes and then move them back so we can get under there? Or is it the sort of thing where you were just, we're working around, you know, the tents are pretty much fixed and we're working around them? It's actually two way. Um, Half of our unhoused community does actually cooperate with us and they are willing to actually move their tents a few feet if it's blocking an emergency exit or something of that major sort. And then on the back end, if they do not want to cooperate in that aspect, which we respect, we just clean around them. And when we clean around them, we, we don't power wash anywhere near their tent so they're not getting bombarded with any kind of wetness. But we generally just clean around the area with some mops and whatnot, some brooms, to avoid them being uh, interrupted by street clean. But if they're cooperative and they want us to clean up their area, then by all means, we will at that point in time, let Clean Street know that it is okay to actually do that. That we're the first ones that make contact with our unhoused community before Clean Street touches any other belongings. Understood, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's excellent. I think it sort of feeds into the next three points, and that is we're starting a new year, and, uh, you know, our needs uh, are 
changing. They certainly changed in 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, I've received calls from business owners and property owners complaining about security, the absence of uh, police, uh, and appreciating the presence of your team. So we want to keep doing that. But what we want to see is, um, and we've talked about this, Ayana and Bill, over the last two months, is that the two of you, as you're doing your patrol, I mean, this is community policing. It's the best kind of police. I mean, having so, uh, uh, security people, police, whatever you want to call them, uh, assistance. Uh, walking the streets makes the property owners, the, the unhoused community, as you've talked about, they probably, people appreciate you the most. Uh, business owners, pedestrians feel better. And so what we'd, what we'd like to do starting, you know, next month is have you, when Diana finishes a package for you to give to each business owner is to go in, introduce yourself, tell them you're available, make sure they can call. Because a lot of times they'll call me or Jeff or someone else or Diana, whatever, to say they've got uh, a security problem, you know, the police aren't coming, so they want you guys to come. And I wanna make sure that the bid isn't that big. When you're walking the streets, you can get to know every single, not every single, but many of the business owners and property owners that you interact with and let them know who you are, that they can call you and find out what they need. You know, uh, we had a call about the, the guy who was saying that he felt he was in fear because there was a, a, a huge amount of people feeding on the weekends in front blocking his property. Well, we help navigate that. And, and when the security's there, they feel comfortable and it's okay. And you, then, then people cohabitate well. So I think one of the things that we're doing, I think for, I wish for the, this year is to have that walking of the, of the district by the two of you and with others, giving out a brochure, telling them they can call you, asking them what it is they need from their security force that they're not getting from LA City Services. Um, and I've had a you know an earful of it, and I think you guys have accommodated it. But I think once you're out there, uh, you'll get more information so that for so that you can implement whatever is needed. And I think. For us on this community, Ron has been here forever. Timothy has some, some views, has been here for a few years um, and, and others. Uh, uh, if you can, Rick's been around and Temple, you're new. You sort of live, uh, uh, you you're both work and, and live in the area. If you can identify things that you think that the security force uh, can do to help make people feel safer, and address things that aren't covered by the city. I mean, we exist because the, the city hasn't done things that people expect them to do. Um, and I think we're filling that void. So if there are things that everyone thinks about, and I'd like to, you know, for the next meeting in, in a couple of weeks, think about what you've experienced and how we can deploy Bill and Ayana even better than we already, uh, than they already are uh, in, in, in addressing needs. And if anyone has any ideas now, I'd like to, like to hear them. The first one that I have is, uh, uh, going, walking the district, giving them the brochure that I've seen the draft of that Diana did and asking them what they want us to do. Um, we know everyone's going to say eliminate homelessness. We can't do that. You know, you can mitigate the effects of it, but we're not going to, right. Um, uh, but you know, ask them, you know, uh, aside from curing the impossible, at least address finding out what their needs are so we can address it. And that's one that we'll do immediately. So anyone else have any other ideas or we can reflect on it? Well, can I add one quick thing? Uh, as far as uh, our interaction with uh, the unhoused population and how that has really improved, uh, one thing that we've been doing because the unhoused people are part of our community as well, We've passed out our phone number to them, and we are beginning to get calls from them asking for assistance uh, if they've had a theft or if they've had a problem. Uh, so even our unhoused population are beginning to, to call us and ask for assistance. And they have cell phones? Well, most do. Almost all do. Necessity of life, I guess. Hmm. 
that's that's actually good. I mean, it's a, it's a whole community and uh, interacting and. Well, they've begun giving us information as well as about where the issues are at night uh, and, and where the, the, the places that we need to be to help keep an eye on things. So uh, that's something that's been happening uh, just recently. That's good. Anything else, Timothy? Uh, no, I guess I continue to stress how the Clean and Green team's new team has really helped keep things organized. And um, that was our struggle last year, I think. And so that has helped a lot. And I think that the security team partnering with them has been really helpful for reporting, too. Yeah. Uh, you had your street. I know you're not there as you much as you were. Uh, your street was uh, the stories that you told me. Uh, pretty bad and I I think it's getting better. I think it's trending better and uh, with the cleanliness. It's definitely, the it's definitely trending better in Highland is as well. I mean, I still have a big problem obviously with the porta potties because I don't think that they serve a purpose. Um, or were put in there to stop the spread of COVID but it, uh, there's no logic or science to support that. And the former city council member put them there. So I don't know if the current city council member would be willing to remove them. It just creates blight. It just creates, a, it's an attractive place to hang out and create more dirt. Um, I have COVID right now. I'm fine. I don't think that that needs to be the urging factor. I just got, you know, they're not doing anything anymore and it's always COVID. So I don't, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think I think it's kind of up to our media district to keep the homelessness issue top of mind without letting COVID get in the way. Well, you know, um, yeah, I agree. We, we have to live COVID or not. And I, I, I didn't know. Uh, I hope you have a speedy recovery. Um, the, um, uh, you know, the someone must have. Uh, done a study about these porta potties. Porta potties aren't going to be any good if they're not maintained. Um, in fact, it can be worse if they're not. Uh, but I wonder. I wonder you know, where uh, the new council member is going to be uh, at our meeting in in February. And I think that may be a point. I mean, if they have data that says this is working, this is helping. <laughs> they don't have data about the restaurants closing. Did you see that? <laughs> right. Uh, they, <laughs> they just do I mean, the, city, the city may or may not. May, they, someone had the bright idea to do it. And your experience is uh, in, 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 in City Hall, your experience is that it made things worse, not better. Correct. Look around. Yeah. 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 So there's graffiti now. It's just, it's completely. <clears throat> Completely embarrassing, but that's again status quo for elected leaders. It's not up to them to save us because they're part of the problem. It's up to us to keep our minds forward in keeping the neighborhood safe for employees, business members, even homeless people. But unfortunately, there's more needles on the ground. I don't think that they're being they're, they're, it's not safe out there for them. No. And it's not COVID. Sorry. Well, I think the district looks better than a lot of other places. And uh, thanks to the stuff that we've been doing, you know, as we've seen over the last year. Um, so I think that's a, that is a good point. Uh, I'm going to come up with a list, run it by you guys to raise with the, with the council person uh, who's going to be uh, speaking and having a, a seminar with us uh, in February. I mean, at the end of the, at the end of the month, any other thoughts? I mean, we can keep evaluating the needs it's on the it's on the list, but the parking zones and the RVs. Um, I know you know Ashley at uh, um, Cat and Fiddle was having that big problem with the RV, who is staying there because there's a porta potty and a faucet, and it's like free camping for them, and they're not doing any ticketing. The car the registration's expired five years, so there's no law anymore. Um, and well, so I thought I. Yeah, uh, Timothy. So I've been getting calls from uh, uh, property owners who said, "Look, 
cars are parked here forever. Our employees can't come in and out of work. They have fear of coming in and out of work. They're not getting ticketed. People are living in cars and things like that. Well, that's part of it, part of what our society has. So what I think we need to do is evaluate where parking zones uh, need to be enforced or added so that if someone needs to sleep in their car, uh, God bless them, may they find a place that is comfortable for them and that doesn't uh, inhibit other property owners. And I think that's really what what the, the team is looking at. They're going to have a map with all the parking zones in the district and taking into consideration what uh, – what the, the some of the stakeholders have advised us what they would like and then we would take that back uh, through the city to get the property uh, get them either enforced or adjusted to fit the needs of the district um, and the uses that we have so I think that's a, a, a good purpose but the parking zones I think uh, uh, will help manage the flow of, of uh, people in and out of the district and the uses and help the businesses. A lot of complaints from businesses and employers saying that people can't find parking because some someone's blocking it and has been for five days, or they're uh, and they just want them somewhere else so they can use their their offices. It yeah. would be good. It would be good, and I don't want to go on a tangent here, but it would be good to get those complaints from people and direct them to the city council member's office because ultimately, like, they're going to have to decide those things. Like, we don't have. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's not maybe not the best strategy given our the current. I think that's I think that's exactly what we have to do, and and I think that's what Diane is setting up with the new councilman is so that we can say, look, here are some needs in this district. They're reasonable. Um, they affect people. They affect safety. The city hasn't filled it in. Uh, hasn't done their job, and so we'd like for you to you know move it forward um, and see if she will see if there's a change. But I agree with you on the on the effectiveness of the uh, of the government. Hey, it's David. Not, yeah. David may, I, may I jump in on this because I just wanted to make it uh, get get clear on the on what you're saying about the parking. What you and Timothy are talking about. I I, I know we've had a problem with the uh, with the motor homeless for a while. Um, you're proposing a a, a, a private or a, a parking lot as opposed to having a designated spot on the street for uh, anybody who needs a, uh, to sleep in their car, for instance. Is that what you're saying? You need a no, I'm not, I'm not proposing that. I'm saying that there are places so there that are, are better, there are places that are better suited for overnight campers if someone is in the situation where they must live there, okay? And so the, the complaints are that there seems to be no enforcement or logic to how the city has structured its parking zones. So that for us to have a, a, a more effective uh, layout in our, in our district, we have completed this sort of study of the parking zones and find out if there's anything we can do to accommodate our stakeholders, businesses and owners as to what part, where the, whether the parking zone should be uh, adjusted, left alone, or enforced. Uh, yeah. And along with that, we, we and I, I believe we have that data for how many motor homeless are actually in our district. I know we've been doing a lot of um, statistics towards that. Am, am I correct with that? Would you know about that, Bill or Ayana? I, th I think uh, we have. Yes, I can actually give you that data as I'm pulling it up right now. Currently okay. in our district. Yeah, so that would determine, you know, how many spots we would actually need. But I still think if a city lot could become available, uh, we might even suggest that we would even monitor it to get people actually off the street. That is the point. Let's put that on our request list for the new councilman, right? Yeah. It, yes. It's not that, yeah. oh, by the way, it's not that we don't, uh, we're, again, we're not going to solve homelessness. And, and I want everyone to be happy, how, whatever situation they're in, if they're living in a, in a trailer or not. The issue is that it's interfering with uh, people who are trying to go to work, trying to park their cars, trying to do business and, and, and trying to run their businesses. And that's all. So it's just a matter of logically setting the flow of traffic and parking. So in the district, so that everyone can cohabitate comfortably and safely together. And I think we'll do it. If we don't do it, we know the city won't. 
So yeah. I've got, I'm making a list of, and we'll go over it before we have that meeting with the uh, new councilman. Thank you. I do want to add uh, one quick uh, thing as we're talking about uh, the parking situation that uh, Bill and I were able to actually do. Uh, there was one pickup truck that was located on McCadden uh, Place and Romaine on the southeast corner. Right. And it had been there for a long time. It has been one of those nuanced vehicles that has been there. Uh, Bill and I have actually responded to it with Plain Street while we were cleaning up that area because of 10 fires. And from the first time that we noticed that it had bullet holes, windows broken, there was no way anybody can live in it. It was not livable because it's a pickup truck. So after a little bit of time, Bill was actually able to get in contact because of our relationship that we have with Hollywood Tow. We were able to kind of get an idea of what it is that we can do. We were able to track down a parking enforcement officer. And again, this was not a request through any official channel. This was just us flagging down a uh, traffic officer and collaborating with them. And they were able to actually go to the vehicle, chalk it, mark it down that it's been abandoned. And after a certain period of time, we were finally able, we just confirmed this uh, day before yesterday that the vehicle was actually impounded by Hollywood Tow. But that was a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of joint effort between Hollywood Tow and security to, we went out of our way to ensure that we can try to do that. And that's right. just one vehicle that we were able to get off the street. No, that's good initiative and it goes to show you that the like standard signs are not even they don't mean anything unless you who it's not your job to go find a parking guy to go do something about it it's his job and he's not doing it and that's because no one's telling him what to do so right great thank you west hollywood has begun this week to start uh enforcing certain parking restrictions uh they're not doing uh, metered parking, but they are doing uh, street cleaning. And you know, uh, uh, West Hollywood is just one block uh, uh, west of us. Uh, but in a limited capacity this week, uh, West Hollywood, City of West Hollywood has started enforcing uh, certain parking restrictions and, and passing out tickets. Well, that doesn't help us though. No, but it's a step in the right direction. And it was no one was doing it. And now we're starting to get the mindset of starting to uh, to uh, issue those citations again. Good. Um, so moving forward, uh, so we've got the parking zones and the, and the new projects, kind of those, those three uh, agenda points really all blend together, is going forward this year, what we have is we have a, our security guards, uh, of, uh, they're not security guards, they're sec security patrol. Um, it's built on the community policing type of a model, unarmed, just people where, you know, available to help. And they do, and, and, they've, and they've done some, some great things. They're on, often on bikes or on foot or in the car, and there's a path that they go. And what I would like for us to do this year is evaluate that path and one, what, whether they should uh, modify it a little bit People are used to seeing them go through it, whether they should go to certain areas and spend more time. So it's better, and hopefully we'll be able to meet in person soon, but it's better to do it in person and look at the map, okay, and, and go over it together as to where our people, where Ayana and Bill and some of their people on foot can go there and show a presence, spend some time there, and then move to another area um, and, and hit all of the areas that seem to need the presence of a foot uh, patrol. Uh, you know, just the presence, you know, sort of keeps things peaceful and quiet. And so one of the things we'll be doing in the coming months is to evaluate, they've got a great, I know uh, your, uh, your in-house uh, uh, supervisor for your company had came up with a path, but we should all evaluate you know, whether, hey, instead of driving through and just spent momentarily or just a brief period of time at an area, whether they should really anchor themselves for a longer period of time um, in certain districts. And I'd like for you guys to think about that for the next meeting and then all of us to sit down and look at that map. And uh, it's kind of hard to, um, to uh, do it by, um, by Zoom, but if we do it, 
in the office and lay out the map and show the different spots where they go to and they go to a spot and they check in that they've been there and uh, and determine if we can modify it okay and we could if we and if uh, bill you and, and and Ayana should should think about um, how to improve it right how to how to make it more effective what spots to spend more time at uh, and um, and I think some of that will become apparent as you go door to door, visiting businesses and property owners in the in the district. So that's just sort of the new project for 2021 is to do that, is to really find out where we need it. And, and all of us will come up with some ideas. Um, the last hey, point. David, yep. um, and, and, and since you brought this up, it, it is kind of a, once again, a, a Bill and Ayana question. And I know the process about how they check into different spots and so forth, but we haven't talked about this since they instituted that program, which is, which is uh, done digitally. But uh, so Bill and Ayana, how, how much does this change or has this changed over this, this uh, I, for, I forget that it has a, it has a name, but uh, where you check in, but uh, Vtex. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and how is that updated uh, based on the different spots and the different demands? I mean, maybe you could address that a little bit right now just to clear it up. Uh, does it change over the years? It does, uh, it's somewhat changed uh, because of COVID. Uh, one of the places that we used to do a DTEX location closed. So that was removed, that was Gold's Gym. Uh, we actually would go through their parking lot uh, when they closed, that was eliminated from the DTEX. Uh, but one of the things that we do is we track the hotspots based on uh, the requests for service from our stakeholders. And we have the ability to uh, adjust that to focus more attention in areas where problems are coming up. Uh, and then as problems go away in a particular area, uh, we can spend less time there. So we, we have the ability to do that quite easily. Okay, so you, you currently have 31 buttons in our district. Yeah, but I think you should uh, always reassess them and maybe it needs fewer check-ins and maybe spending more time in certain areas. That's the point. And looking at the map and looking at you know, the request for service and input from this committee, maybe there'll be places where you will spend more time, maybe places you'll spend less time, maybe you'll add a stop, right? New yeah, stop. Yeah, we have the capability to actually easily go into Guard Tech, which is the actual software system. That's what it's called, Guard Tech, that supplies the, the DTEX buttons. And we can go in there and easily readjust the amount of DTEX buttons that our officers need to hit within their shift. We can add more buttons, as I just mentioned, we have 31 buttons in our district at the moment. Different That's areas a stop, within. right? That's a stop. That's a, a, a Yeah, that is support. a stop. And I can show you. These are the little buttons that are located throughout the district that we actually utilize. So it's really simple for us to just program these. Um, I program them. I program them on my end. And we just stick them on to the location that we're going to. So we can always add these and we can deactivate other ones if we need to. And as, as the schools begin to have uh, children back in place, we are also adjusting our pathways because of that. I know Hollywood Schoolhouse uh, is beginning uh, some of the youngest children. Uh, it was at the end of last week, beginning of this week. And going into the future in the next few weeks, uh, they're going to start opening that up to even more grades. Uh, and certainly, you know, LAUSD and uh, we have uh, three big schools in our district. Uh, they're in, under increasing pressure to get students back in the classroom. So certainly as our schools uh, reopen and we start to have children uh, in, in the area, we can readjust and have some extra attention in that area. Uh, the, the, way, the way it works though with those buttons is they, the buttons have to be within a secure location. In other words, you can't just put it on a lamppost. Uh, am I correct or, am, or could, you, could you elaborate? Anywhere, we can put them anywhere yeah. we want. We can yeah. literally put them anywhere. They can be removed by people as well. If, they, yes. if, you put them, 
if they're not in a secure location. That was my point. Yeah, that is correct, Ron. Yeah. Most of the most of the buttons. Are, that doesn't, no one's going to do that. Sorry. Yeah, well, most of the buttons are out in where anybody can get to them, and we really haven't had any removed. Uh, All right. Well, the old, but the thing that we want to do is just create a map of what your I don't know if you call them, but the points, uh, the the stop points that you have. Uh, and I think I've seen one, so let's let's have one. I'd like for this committee to comment on it. I'd like for you guys to consider whether you need to adjust them. And if there's any areas that require concentrated presence of the foot patrol so that it deters crime or assists people in whatever they're doing. It's not just crime, it's whatever people feel have a sense of security, walking to their car or uh, any issues with cleaning or any issues with unhoused uh, resident. So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll circulate that and maybe even have a meeting even before uh, next month. And I'll circulate a list of things. Send them to me if you have a, a security question that we should raise with the councilman. I think you're going to do that, right, Diana? And then that we can raise at the meeting. She's going to be here for a certain period of time uh, at our meeting. And we should have boom, 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 concentrated rather than a free for all. I mean, preset some questions that we have and concerns to raise them. I think you raised them, Timothy, we've talked about them and um, that we can submit to the councilman uh, in February. Councilwoman. <laughs> huh? Councilwoman. What did I say? I didn't, I didn't say council person, council, council member. Council member. I think that's what they want. I think they want, I think it's council person, right? Council all right. Okay, great. That sounds good. I'm glad that we're that she'll be at our next meeting. Yeah. Um, is there any uh, old business? Any new business? Let me go back to old business. You know that um, the security team has been working uh, to, uh, they sort of informally call it, uh, solving homeless one person at a time, they had a success. And that when people uh, who are homeless, you know, they, they talk to them, they try and hook them to up with the proper services. And we've had some success. And, um, and we talked about that at the last meeting and th there will be more. So that's another thing that they're doing and it's good. It's good. Um, any new business? Okay, with that, I'm gonna adjourn and uh, those maps will send around for your input and hopefully we'll have a, a meeting soon to talk about if we can adjust and improve uh, any of the places where the, the, the patrol, the foot patrol and bike patrol should spend time. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.